the only thing more important than keeping your tractor trailer running smoothly is being able to stop it on demand every time. Ironically, the brake system that stops your rig is a key factor in keeping it running, whether it's a fleet of one or 100. And when it comes to brake systems, Meritor Wabco, along with Meritor, is the complete air braking system supplier in North America. In this program, we'll cover the entire truck and tractor air brake system. Each component will be identified and we'll show you where it's located and how the system works. All components are available from Meritor Wabco, so let's get started. The brake system is made up of four major segments. The supply system that provides air, the secondary system for controlling the front brakes, the primary system that controls the rear brakes, and the park and emergency brake system. All these systems rely on a sufficient supply of air, and the air must be compressed, dried, regulated, and distributed for your brakes to work properly. First, let's look at the supply system. The heart of the supply system is the air compressor. It's driven by the tractor engine and supplies the compressed air that operates the brakes. A governor controls compressor output by cycling it and keeping the system air pressure within a predetermined range for operation. The governor controls the air system pressure by monitoring the supply tank and sending a signal to the air compressor. The supply tank is sometimes called the wet tank. The signal tells the compressor when to pump and when to rest and keeps the pressure within the operating range. Inside the cab, the operator has gauges that monitor the air pressure, which is normally maintained between a cut-in pressure of 105 PSI and a cut-out pressure of 125 PSI. The governor is usually mounted on the compressor, but may be mounted remotely. The compressor's unloader mechanism controls the loading and unloading of air during the compressor cycle. During loading or pumping, the piston moves downward creating a vacuum on top of the piston. This causes the inlet valve to open and draw air into the cylinder. Next, the piston moves upward, compressing the air in the cylinder. This closes the inlet valve and opens the compressor's discharge valve, building pressure in the system. When the system cutout pressure is reached, the unloader port is pressurized by the governor's signal. This moves the sliding leaf valve and uncovers the inlet cavity. During the piston upstroke, the air returns to the intake port and no compression occurs. Once the pressure in the system has been depleted to cut-in level, the governor's signal to the compressor is exhausted. The sliding leaf valve returns to the loaded position and compression resumes. The air dryer helps collect and expel moisture and other contaminants from the air system. The type of air dryer in the system depends on the application and the type of compressor being used. Meritor Wabco offers a complete family of air dryers, both single and dual cartridge. In this program, we're using a System Saver 1200 single cartridge air dryer. Here's how the air dryer works. Compressed air enters the air dryer at the inlet port and passes through a drying material called desiccant. The desiccant captures moisture as well as oil and other contaminants. When the system cutout pressure is reached, a signal from the governor opens the air dryer purge valve to expel moisture and other collected contaminants. This same signal also unloads the compressor. After the purge cycle, the regeneration valve on the dryer opens and allows dry system air to flow back through the dryer. The backflow air dries the desiccant preparing it for the next cycle. Dry air flows to the supply tank from the dryer outlet. Typically, there are three air tanks, or reservoirs, per truck or tractor. One for the supply air, and one tank each for the primary and secondary air supply. The air is stored in the reservoirs until the brakes are applied. The supply tank is the first tank in the system, and moisture tends to condense and collect in it more easily than the others. The supply tank has a pressure relief valve. If the system becomes overpressurized, the pressure relief valve vents excess air to prevent damage to the system. The supply tank includes a low pressure indicator which monitors overall system air pressure. 
if pressure falls below 60 PSI, an alarm will sound to notify the operator of a low pressure condition. By law, there must be a visual alarm, and in many cases there's also an audible alarm. Air from the supply tank flows to the primary and secondary tanks. These tanks are protected by check valves to prevent the total loss of air in the event of a failure between the service tanks and the compressor. One of the tanks will have a pressure control valve that allows some backflow of air for the air dryer purge cycle. The tanks are required by law to have a manual drain valve at the lowest point to expel water that accumulates over time. Some tanks may have an additional automatic drain valve for convenience. Now let's take a look at the secondary and primary systems. Typically the secondary system controls the front brakes and the primary system controls the rear brakes. The dual circuit foot valve is a key valve in both the secondary and primary systems. It's a dual circuit valve because it separates and controls the primary and secondary brake circuits. Dual circuit systems are required by law to protect the braking system from complete failure. When the brake pedal is depressed, air from the secondary tank flows through the secondary portion of the dual circuit foot valve to a quick release valve and applies pressure to activate the front brakes. A quick release valve speeds up brake release time by exhausting air near the actuated brake. The air does not need to travel back through the system. The exhaust function of the quick release valve is activated when the driver lifts his foot off the pedal and air flows back from the air chambers to the exhaust port. At the same time, air from the primary tank flows through the primary portion of the dual circuit foot valve to a relay valve and applies pressure to activate the rear brakes. Always check the crack pressure rating of a valve before you replace it, and be sure the replacement has the same crack pressure value. The harder you push on the foot valve, the more air the relay valve allows through to activate the brakes more aggressively. Relay valves help minimize delays in brake actuation. They quickly direct air from the tanks to the brake they serve, and use input from the foot valve as their signal to activate. Relay valves can be ordered with various activation or crack pressure values. Crack pressure is the amount of pressure required to open the valve. The foot valve also delivers air to a two-way check valve that separates front and rear brake pressure and allows the dominant pressure to operate the stoplight switch. Now let's look at the final system, the park and emergency brake. The system starts with a two-way check valve that directs the higher pressure of the primary or secondary tank to the parking or emergency brake. The parking brakes are controlled by dash-mounted push-pull valves. The red octagon knob is for the trailer supply brakes, and the yellow diamond knob controls the tractor park brakes. When the knob is pushed in, air travels to the spring brake. The spring force is overcome and the brakes are released. Control and supply air to the trailer passes through the tractor protection valve. In the event of significant pressure loss, the red dash-mounted knob will pop out to close off the supply line to protect the air in the tractor. Now that we've identified the components, let's see what happens when they all work together in a cam brake application. When the brake pedal is pressed, air pressure flows through the lines and valves to the brake chambers at the wheel end. Brake chambers contain a diaphragm and a push rod encased in a housing. The air pressure exerts force on the diaphragm and extends the push rod. The push rod moves the slack adjuster. This converts the chamber's linear motion to rotary motion. The automatic slack adjuster also maintains proper brake adjustment. The S-cam forces the brake shoes apart and against the brake drum. The friction caused by forcing the shoes against the drum is what actually stops your rig. A quick release valve with a two-way check valve provides anti-compounding protection in the park and emergency circuit. This eliminates the possibility of using the service brakes at the same time the parking brake is actuated. Without anti-compounding protection, the brake components could be damaged due to too much force. 
An inversion valve is used to protect the vehicle from a primary system pressure failure. This feature uses the secondary system, in conjunction with the spring brakes, to ensure modulated brake stops without primary air. Meritor Wabco, along with Meritor, provides complete braking systems. All of our components are designed and manufactured to provide reliable service for the long haul. And we have service literature and training material available, as well as technical assistance from our service representatives, who are ready to help. Just call our toll-free customer service center at 800-535-5560. Meritor Wabco, the complete braking system experts.